1 Corinthians, For I have received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body and is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice after supper, saying, This chalice is a new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Nice to see you all this morning. Today's Mass is being offered for Antonia Mindianola. And we're celebrating the feast of St. Bernard. That's how we say it in South Mississippi. In Ireland, we say St. Bernard. So as we come to celebrate this great Cistercian, this holy man, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, and in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, blessed Mary the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for Antonio Mindinola. O oh God, who made the abbot St. Bernard, a man consumed with zeal for your house, and a light shining and burning in your church, grant through his intercession that we may be on fire with the same spirit and walk always as children of light through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning, to our YouTube family. We are glad you can celebrate Mass with us today. Now let's open up our books, our Bibles, and our Bibles, and listen to the Word of God. Our reading from Ezekiel, chapter 36, 23 through 28. Thus says the Lord, I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the four lands, and bring you back into your land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your ancestors. You shall be my people and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Response from Psalm number 51. I will pour clean water on you and wash away all your sins. I will pour clean water on you and wash away all your sins. A clean heart create me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. I will pour clean water on you and wash away your sins. Give me back the joy of your salvation and a willing spirit sustain in me. I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall return to you. I will pour clean water on you, and wash away all your sins. For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humble. O God, you will not spurn. 
I will pour clean water on you and wash away all your sins. Harden not your hearts. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and the elders of the people in parables, saying, the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he went, sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet, my calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged, enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then the king said to his servants, The feast is ready. But those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike. The hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. He said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet, and cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Today I'd like to say a few words about St. Bernard. His titles are Abbot and Doctor. So let me begin, begin with the abbot part. Uh, it says here, this is a very brief summary of what he did. Saint Bernard died in 1153. He was French. He was born in Dijon, France. Uh, he was the Cistercian abbot of Clairvaux, a reformer and spiritual author. He wrote. On, love, on Loving God, 86 sermons on the Canticle of Canticles. He preached against the Albigensians in southern France in the first part of the 12th century. He founded 68 monasteries, preached the Second Crusade, that means he raised the money for it, denounced injustice and worked for the, uh, for the peace, known as the Dr. Mellifluous, the sweet tongued uh, doctor. He was a master of Latin verse. So, I'm going to read to you a sermon by Saint Bernard because nobody but the doctor says it better. And when you read the doctors of the church, there are 35, I think 32 are men, and at least three are women. Saint Catherine of Siena, Saint Teresa of Avila and Hildegard of Bingen. Um, but when you hear a doctor, why is it that they're called doctors? Because they take something that the church sort of believed, has always believed, and clarifies it and makes it more acceptable. And in their work, you find the kernel of our faith, the really, 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 really important stuff. So here is a sermon from the Song of Songs by Saint Bernard of Clairvaux, and um, it is called um, On Loving God. So the first part is the, what do I want you to know? And what I want you to know is how love makes human beings unique. This is what Bernard said. 
Love is sufficient of itself. It gives pleasure by itself and because of itself. It is its own merit, its own reward. Love looks for no cause outside itself, no effect beyond itself. It, its profit lies in its practice. I love because I love. I love that I may love. Love is a great thing so long as it continually returns to its fountain, head flows back to its source, always drawing from there the water which constantly replenishes it. Of all the movements, sensations, and feelings of the soul, love is the only one by which the creature can respond to its creator and make some sort of similar return, however unequal though it may be. So what does God want us to do? What does God want from human beings? St. Bernard answers, For when God loves, all he desires is to be loved in return. Did you know that? All he desires is to be loved in return. The sole purpose of his love is to be loved. Everything else is waste. In the knowledge that those who love him are made happy by the love of him. The bridegroom's love and the bridegroom is Christ. Or rather, the love which is the bridegroom. How beautiful. The love which is the bridegroom asks in return nothing but faithful love. Let the beloved then love in return. So, parenthesis, who is the beloved? For St. Bernard, it was the church and it's also each individual soul. Should not a bride love, and above all, loves the bride? Could it be that love itself would not be loved? Rightly then does she, the church, the soul, give up all other things and give herself wholly to love alone. In giving love back, all she can do is to respond to love. And when she has poured out all her whole being in love, what is that in comparison with the unceasing torrent of that original source? Clearly, lover and love, soul and word, bride and bridegroom, creature and creator do not flow with the same volume. One might as well equate a thirsty man with the fountain. So, why is this important? Because God does not want you to despair over your limitations in loving. What then of the bride's hope, her aching desire, her passionate love, her confident assurance? Is all this to wilt just because she cannot match stride for stride with her giant any more than she can buy with honey for sweetness, rival the lamb for gentleness, show herself as white as the lily? A burn as bright as the sun, be equal in love with him who is love. No, it is true that the creature loves less because she is less, but if she loves with her whole being, nothing is lacking where everything is given. To love so ardently then is to share the marriage bond. She cannot love so much and not be totally loved. And it is in the perfect union of two hearts, God's and the creature, that complete and total marriage consists. Or are we to doubt that the soul is loved by the word first and with a greater love? So, being that St. Bernard was French, I'm going to give you the French version of the collect. Au bienheureux Bernard, la splendeur du verre assassie ton âme, tu répands sur la glisse la lumière de la sagesse et de la foi. O glorious Bernard, the splendor of the word has taken over your soul. You as you spread out over the church the light of wisdom and of faith. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we present the prayers to the faithful. We pray for Antonia, Liliola, 
May he rest in God's peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those dealing with illnesses, we remember Betty Ross, Pat Cuevas, and Dennis, um, um, Jerry Dennis, and for all those who have asked for special prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people dealing with cancer, the coronavirus, and other catastrophic illnesses, may the people doing research find cures, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our leaders to work together for the common good to bring life, justice, peace, and prosperity to all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all former Catholics, may they come back to the church Jesus Christ established, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this feast of St. Bernard, May we remember the two great commandments, to love God and love neighbor as Christ has loved us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for this day and all its opportunities. May we live in your love this day. Do your will through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual thread. Blessed Blessed God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. We offer to your majesty, O Lord, the sacrament of unity and peace as we celebrate the memorial of the abbot St. Bernard, a man outstanding in word and deed, who strove to bring order and concord to your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal, God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh, there was sacrifice for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the in the highest. And today, to help us appreciate the Eucharist, I'd like to use another great father of the church, St. Augustine. St. Augustine said, we, What we see is the bread and chalice. That is what your eyes report to you, which your faith obliges you to accept. What, uh, your, but what your faith obliges you to accept is, that the bread is the body of Christ and the wine the blood of Christ. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and interwilling into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we will be always free from sin and take more distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in you, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the Son of Peace. Peace Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternity. Amen. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the food we have received, O Lord, as we honor St. Bernard, work its effects in us, so that strengthened by his example and instructed by his teaching, we may be caught up in love of you of your incarnate word who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now for me. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And our first reading from Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 23 to 28. God reminds Israel that he will restore them, his people, for the sake of his name. Like Ezekiel, they will be a sign for all nations. God will cleanse them inasmuch as human beings cannot make themselves clean. Again, the new heart will be created by God's Spirit. We can look at the New Testament in Paul's letter to the Romans for further explanation. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, 
who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Then in the gospel, Matthew chapter 22, 22 1 to 14 verses, uh, this parable has been given many allegorical traits by Matthew. For instance, the burning of the city of the guests who refused the invitation, which corresponds to the destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans in AD 70. The parable ends with a section that is peculiar to Matthew, which some take as a distinct parable itself. Matthew presents the kingdom in its double aspect, already present and something that can be entered here and now and something that will be possessed and by those present members who can stand the scrutiny of the final judgment. Thank you. Very good. May I got a cute email here. The sole purpose of a child's middle name is so he knows when he's really in trouble. <laughs> Did you ever notice that when you put two words together, they and IRS, it spells theirs? <laughs> Aging. Eventually you will reach a point when you stop lying about your age and start bragging about it. Some people try to turn back their odometers, not me. I want people to know why I look this way. I've traveled a long way and a lot of the road, a lot of the roads were not paved. You know you're getting old when everything either dries up, sags, or leaks. Or being young is beautiful, being old is comfortable. Lord, keep your arm around my shoulder and your hand over my mouth. And may the Lord, may you always have love to share, cash to spare, tires with airs, and friends who care. The Lord be with you, and, with you. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass ascended, go in peace. Thanks. Thanks to God. Let us pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Spirit your power is in the and in the name of the power of your love, send forth your Spirit, and they shall be great. You shall be the place of the earth. For God, our Lord, our Holy Spirit, is your star of our Spirit. Grant us the Holy Spirit, we may be truly wise and rejoice in the consolation of Christ our Lord.